добрый день. Меня зовут Альман Бейбутов. Я директор продукта. Альман Бейбутов, я директор продукт бизнес в Positive Technologies. Сегодня мы будем говорить о результативе киберсекьюрити и как вы можете идти от процессов к результатам. Сегодня у нас есть гости и партнеры этого дискуссии. Сергей Гусев, директор of Information Security Department in Северсталь. Александр Данченков, head of Information Security from Rusagro Company, and Vyacheslav Kasimov, Director in Information Security Department in Moscow Credit Bank. Okay, let's speak about this interesting topic, the resultative cyber security, and let's begin by saying what do we see and what management sees when they think about projects and when they think about results of cybersecurity activities. We would like to hear opinions of participants about what is expected from top managers of companies. What do they expect from cybersecurity? What is being expected if there are roles of business partners? What is expected from representatives of top management and cybersecurity? And what... How do the results look like when the managers in information security do realize projects, do fulfill and provide uh, protection of the information security in the company? Okay, let's begin, uh, Sergey, with you. How the results and expectations to the results are formulated by your top management? Well, as for the results... The absence of risks, it's a classical story. If you will look deeper, we do have a system dividing the matrix in four levels from hygiene, basic, advanced, adaptive, so every asset is moving within the budget uh, protection, protected strategy. So if you have the result as protectedness of your company, then we look at the assessment through the methods. From the point of view of the result of business expectations is a satisfaction of the client to work with the business and IT technologies and absence of risks. How your top management formulates the results? Well, for our management is not to have shutdowns in the production and in business systems. They should continue working and bring profits to the company. This is a key for our business. Also, we commit for the matrix health model. It's a complex integral indicator which evaluates 52 uh, IT processes and these processes are being improved by us. For example, the work with personal data or availability of the protection means and the endpoints so that we would have 100% operational databases. So all this together, which has a certain weight, is our KPI for the business. Okay, thank you, Vyacheslav. I think that globally, it's not very important for the business what are we doing. The result is important for them. And the most useful result for the business is when they can act and realize their own business plans in the conditions when they don't have any destructive external influences or external influences which influence the financial results and loss of the business. So the key point here is that the banking systems are available for the clients and the second of all, the banking systems are working in the mode when some expected influence brings to expected results. For example, if the client says, I want to pay 1 million rubles, and so that these 1 million rubles go to these uh, counter agents, it will be guaranteed 1 million rubles, and it will guaranteed deliver to the place where the client expects. So as for myself and as for the business, I do agree. We need to create some good sanitary conditions when there is no external influence on the business and this is something that business needs in a given case because they need to fulfill their plans irrespectively to what is the external situation around the business and how the events are developing. Thank you very much.
Okay, let's go one level down. We've been speaking about expectations of uh, top IT management companies, but you as directors of departments in the security department, what do you expect from your activities? On your level, how these results that you convey to the top management, how can they be divided into results or sub-results in your areas of activity? Vyacheslav, can you be the first one? Yeah, of course. In order to sync with bank top management, we have invented uh, cybersecurity framework, uh, NIST methodology, in order to be able to bring the informational security to one single number, which will be understandable to everybody, because it's from 0% to 100%. And <coughs> therefore, any activities that we do from our side, they should influence this final number. And any projects which I initiate, understanding that they are necessary, they are working within this framework, and there is a possibility of understanding, well, if I will do this right now, the general level of information security and the level of information maturity, how will it grow? So for me, if you will try to build this connection to the business, an extremely important point is to see how this assessment has been influenced. From my point of view, our CIS, CIS. what is more important is closing some scenarios which can lead to very destructive activities inside of the bank or to direct financial losses, which are not acceptable for the bank. Thank you, Alexander. Well, I would like to tell you that there is a certain methodology that we use, but we don't use NIST. We use uh, 27001, uh, 14 domains, which have certain maturity from 1 to 5. That's the methodology we use. So every project which has been initiated or any process influences this level of maturity. In addition to that, as CIS, I see the main objective being that we have to work in advance. If we do have risks and incidents, we have to calculate them and we should lay down the mattress so that it wouldn't happen. So if any of these incidents was discovered by SOG, we have to mitigate it as soon as possible. And then we have to understand what reasons have led to its existence and create compensating events and measures, and they are within those new projects that Vyacheslav was speaking about, which we see that they will cover this risk in the future. Interesting. Sergey, what about you? It's very similar to what colleagues were doing. We do have those matrix, and we, if you come back to the satisfaction of these results of your own activity, yes, it's a team. <laughs> that works for the result, they understand the result. And we have been using KPIs, QRs, which have been shared inside, and then we use them to measure our success in all the directions. One of the key directions for us is more in cybersecurity area, is the traditional network security, our security for applications, infrastructure security, and a culture of personnel which participates in it. And also, I see the new slide, data security from the point of view of uh, protecting yourself from something which is more complicated than the simple information you have in the business. Thank you. Okay, okay drawing the line. Generally, as I've heard, you are using certain framework, plus minus. It's the set of baselines and some internal objectives which are within this framework. And every project, every initiative that you try to realize, you give them to the business as a step or as a stage to the result you provide for them. Question about trust. Security is built on the trust. And I think that business can evaluate trust to own cybersecurity department and to you as directors of these services. Do you look at the element of trust so the top management would trust you? Okay, Vyacheslav. Of course. 
trust is a very important thing. And what is very important is not to lose communications with the business and with the top management as well. You have to do it on a regular basis, do the security awareness in order to convey to them what is the main idea and what can be solved by this function, which is called informational security, which cases can be solved. So, if you will speak more practically, all those cubes in the Trust Foundation, they are based on solving some simple cases and sometimes complicated cases. For example, complicated case, if you compare with the Foundation, it's the Foundation, if you have solved this complicated case, then you will be trusted a priori in the future more and more, which is cool. But sometimes you don't have those big cases which you have to solve. So you cannot make this big foundation. Then, you know, you create a small uh, foundation beams, which you put beam by beam. This is... Uh, speeds up your work, it improves the quality of your work, and see what is important here. You're not lying to the business in its expectations. It's a very important story so that we wouldn't have this uh, difference. Another recommendation that I have for all the sisters in the market, don't take too high responsibility. And sometimes it would be better to say that, well, definitely we're not going to do that. We will concentrate on this or on that, because... There is a certain set of incidents which might happen, and if they will happen, it's going to be bad for you. But if the business is understandable, and in most cases they are understandable, they perceive it and they take it, and it creates these cubes of this foundation that I was speaking about. Do you want to add something? Zero trust methodology, like don't trust anybody downstairs. Well. On the top level, everything should be built on the trust because everything else will lead to additional costs and expenses. The trust in different levels to what you do, to the results, and to availability of some additional sets of control, which we should introduce additionally. Thank you. Well, I would like to add that business trust is built on a very good communications. What business needs, you should convey this information on very understandable language, metaphorical language, practical language, business language. You should tell them what you're doing. You should tell them about the risks you're covering. You shouldn't speak like business should, me, should not be scared away by some non-existent threats. You know, you should show to the business that this uh, can be realized, this is not probable, this is more probable. And then from the side of the business, you will have trust. If you will scare away your business, uh, that on every sneeze and every cough, you will panic, then business will stop trusting you. But when you work with them constructively, when you tell them about real problems, when you tell them about real risks, then business will trust you more. And then you will protect them from those risks. And this is where this trust is coming from. Well, it's very interesting about those metaphorical things. When I was coming to MKB, the new area, I'm new for the board, the board is new for me, and we had to communicate somehow with each other. So I was sitting and thinking, how can I convey the problem of information and security, like a neurogenerational generational firewall and why the bank needs it? So I brought it to the explanation, so I made a presentation in a kindergarten style. I created a farm, fence, some threats, like a neighbor boy can steal your apple and uh, uh, this uh, machine can be burned. And on the basis of these allegories, I've built our relations. What do we need in order to build this perimeter? Because perimeter is very important. So I will... I will support you. It's very important to find those basic comparisons which are very understandable for every person of any age and any level of education. Thank you. <laughs> Let's dig deeper. I would like to speak about key components of projects or some internal initiatives you have which lead to the result. We can speak about technologies, we can speak about processes, we can speak about the team. What should be most important when you create project team objective 
so that they would be charged to convey the result they are to achieve. Vyslav, very good question. Well, in the beginning, the project team should understand the problems on the global level and why various projects are being fulfilled. Because they are not taking these projects from the uh, thin air. They need to protect you from existing problem or the problem that is forecasted for the nearest future. So, security awareness, we need it here. Because, yes, they have to be well informed about what is happening around them, number one. Number two, it's extremely important so that in the framework of these projects, and I'm on the side of risk-oriented approach, the cost of the project should not be higher than the risk of its realization. So if you do have incident statistics, uh, statistics related to losses because of them, it's a very good basis to be able to convey to other people why do they need it. And it's not really important whether it's inside of the organization or a general statistics for, from the market. So I think education is the main thing that has to be available. And it's a very important stimulating factor for everybody. So with all these project teams and surroundings, so I would move this conversation in another direction. Maybe there's a danger to put every potential executive into this general picture of what happens in the company or in the bank, just to share this result with everybody else. How do you understand that you give this person a picture of a proper detail without diving him into other problems which they don't need to know? Well, I think if there were some incidents, it's not necessary to provide all the details. For example, if some big losses did happen, we can say that we did have big losses. However, the scenario of realization of any threat, this is something that project teams will speak about. Otherwise, they will work in totally different resultative field and results can be very surprising. So, so I'm for the openness inside of the organization. And if something bad happens, you need to tell it to us, including those doers who are realizing something to mitigate the threat. Alexander, I will support my colleague. Without understanding of details or the goal of the project by the project team, the project will not be successful. It's not a secret. Many people have seen projects. Well, the project manager plays the role of the communicator manager without going deep into the communication. This is a bad story. Project manager, client and executive, they should understand goals that team has. And then project will be successful and not just formal. Thank you. Sergey? I'm not going to be so short about projects. Okay, number one, precisely, if you go back to the topic of communication, any changes should be conveyed and shared by people. If it's not going to be shared by people, then there will be some difficulties in their communications, which afterwards you will spend a lot of efforts to overcome these problems. So the faster you're going to tell about this and the company will share, not on the executive team, but also those who do the projects. So the second one is the client, so that project would not be just by the decision of information security, but it should influence some business processes, business objectives. And you will reduce the risks in the end. And recently, in the framework of budget defense, we also have a thing which is called a driver-based model, when under... <laughs> certain processes, we understand some key factors, which are called drivers. And it's much easier to explain them to the business. Why do we need this project? Because most of them, this can be a driver of a planned replacement, planned replacement of the system, and everybody understands. Another driver could be some legislative changes or cybersecurity inclusion from the point of view of framework which is going to be used. This also simplifies the process of protection, but everything else 
It's a classical approach uh, for projects, transparent requirements, and maybe recently, with the consideration of complication of IT systems, we made a preliminary work and assessment because we have a lot of decisions, but during realization, you face certain difficulties, and you know you need to convey this information in an understanding level to the executives. So the final question for this section is your real practical experience of whether you're able to uh, bring these results to the market players like uh, service providers, integrators, some vendors, or you have to be a mediator between them, a cognitive mediator cognitive component which uses hands in the best case, in the other case uh, knowledge, and then you pull all these initiatives to results together with your team. So are there any players in the market which are working for such results? <laughs> can I? Yeah, you can. Honestly, there are two options. When everything is being written in agreement, all the expectations from the company, and it's not important whether it's technical specification or maybe just described results which client wants to get. Option number two is, uh, you know, verbal agreement. Verbal agreement, it's something that can be achieved much faster. Sometimes it works even better, but everything depends on invariability of two agreeing parties. Two persons which are trying to find this verbal agreement. So I like more the story about writing this information into the agreement of what is to be done. And then everything becomes interesting. Because the first option of complexities is when everything has been described, but due to unknown reasons, they were not able to do it on time. And this is the story which requires high art of management, but even high art of management and somehow diplomacy skills are required from another story. For example, for the first time, we have faced a situation that there is a unique supplier of applied systems uh, in Russian market, and this unique supplier just became very bold, and they say, well, we're not interested in putting all the requirements about the security that you're telling us, just make follow our typical agreement, and then everything's going to be all right. I think this is a first sign of a bad trend, and I hope that this trend will not be realized, and we will be able to show these uh, skills of diplomacy to find an agreement. But it gives me a certain tension. Alexander, what about you? Well, we always try to put down functional requirements, uh, technical requirements, informational security requirements into the agreement. And we did have practical case when one of the companies uh, came uh, to the contest. They did some IT works, but they didn't look in the direction of informational security. And we stopped this agreement and we even deducted some amount of money for the informational security, which was done by another company efforts. Another case, it's not a secret that any service provider doesn't carry any risks uh, for uh, costs incurred uh, during DDoS attack, for example. So everybody should understand that you will receive uh, a certain compensation if the attack will go through. But I didn't see on the market which of the companies can commit for real financial damage. So this is another case. And topic number three, please pay attention when you hire the third line for investigation of the incidents. Nobody will commit for the SLA to research some incidents uh, for the deadlines. For reaction, yes, but for the final, no. Possibly it's very hard to do, but this fact is available. That's why service contracts, they are very complicated from the point of view of conveying their KPIs to the contractor and within the project we we do those projects but uh, speaking about some exploitational component okay Sergei, are you able to convey this result or you require additional work yes we are able 
you need to apply additional effort irrespectively to the maturity. Every company has its own subjective understandings. So actions, agreements. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll finish this section. I would like to say thanks to everybody for a beautiful discussion. Uh, and answers to our questions. And I would like to repeat that we've been speaking about the resultative cybersecurity. We really are moving to providing uh, info security for the result. The result is expected on the level of the results are being conveyed to CISA, executives of the project, and even the executives and the market players are ready to communicate these results in their projects. Okay, thank you very much. Alman Bibitov, Positive Technologies, we were with you.